Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mixed Media Monday. I am Ophelia, and thank you guys so much for joining me today. I thought it would be cool to give you guys my top 10 favorite mixed media journaling supplies. These are just the materials that are on my desk, and I feel as though I can't create without putting my hands on, if not all of them, quite a few of them every time I create. Um, if you're brand new here, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining. Uh, this will honestly help you along with what I use. If you've been here for a while, these may look familiar, um, but I just kind of wanted us to just honestly have a look at my favorite toys. So I hope that you guys will enjoy this. Maybe you'll see some of your favorites as well. We'll definitely have everything that I've used here listed down in the description box. Um, you let us know what's your favorites if you have some and um, grab yourself a drink. Let's hope that I won't turn this into four hours, but let's just have a look at my favorite art supplies or the supplies that I feel as though I can't create without. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so, um, Let's start with, of course, the obvious, which is my sketchbook. And um, I know that whenever I go into an art supply store, it, it's just overwhelming. What I would suggest is pick one that feels comfortable so that it's not cumbersome for you to like, oh gosh, I've got to get that thing. Um, my sketchbook goes with me everywhere. My book bag for school, um, my travel bag, it's all I just it's my trusty companion and I think that's important to find something large small doesn't matter as long as you feel very comfortable working in it this one just happens to be a, a Stillman and Byrne um, I like Strathmore all of the above you just find one that feels good in your hand and that you're okay working with it for me I don't mind using a wire bound or um, one that's hard bound and you can work across the page. This one just happened to be one that I'm trying my best to use up because I have like two pages, I think left before it's finished. So that's why I brought it along today. So first thing is the obvious, a sketchbook. Um, my second thing that I honestly can't live without, and these are kind of dual purpose. And what I will do is link in somewhere a video where we did the prepping of the pages because I feel as though I can we're gonna link it down here according to the linker down here can we put it up here it's got it. oh it'll be somewhere but I did a video in the beginning of how I prep all of my journal pages and so I still feel as though I cannot create a page without my Jerry's Gesso, and this is just white studio Gesso, and some matte medium. Um, and you can go back and look at that link to see the video of how I prep the pages. But this is honestly just how I start every single page that I do with some Gesso, some matte medium. I use my matte medium more as a, a glue um, or to adhere things down, but these two go hand in hand whenever I create. Which brings me to my next thing, and that is what I usually glue down. And let's have a look at my ephemera or paper. Um, I always love to have old dictionary papers around and collage bits and such like that. Those go in first as my background to give me like visual texture and actual texture. Um, in my work. So this is the kinds of things that I will use to kind of, to glue down on my pages to prep them um, with my matte medium and with my gesso. So um, there's, you'll always find some sort of papers or collage elements or painted papers or ephemera on my table in my work because it's just one of the, my it's one of the easiest things that I can put down to like add a bold impact. So ephemera and paper and all of that stuff is always somewhere in my work. Number four, is that where we are? Number four has to go to my, um, my watercolors. And um, 
Again, I'm just using my regular Lucas watercolor paints. I usually keep these two and they honestly sit on my desk like so. And okay, just a little bit of a secret. I was one of those people that when I started into this world of art journaling, as soon as I put down a color on my palette, I always had to clean it up because I wanted things to look neat and tidy. And now we're just in the mess phase because for me, even having this sitting on my desk, I just find it inspiring. So my Lucas watercolors, they usually make an appearance first where I just want to get rid of the scariness of a white page. I will go in, throw down some color, easy. Um, with this set, and I've added some different things, I can, I can create pretty much anything I want. And that's why I think I like the Lucas watercolors. But again, you walk into an art store, there's supplies everywhere. Another that I love to use are like the Turner watercolors are my favorite. Um, but there's so many great brands out there. You pick your favorite, let us know. Number five has to be my acrylic paints. Um, again, any acrylic paints, I just happen to use mainly um, Lucas. I like the finish of these. I like the color range. In an art supply store, there are so many to choose from. What I would suggest is that you try them, um, find which one you like, and then learn those colors like the back of your hand. And so I feel as though because I've worked with Lucas for so long, like there are colors that I can pull out and I don't even have to think about my page. It just happens because I can just start pulling colors and get into a zone and it almost feels as though the colors that I choose do the work for me. So I happen to like Lucas, I will throw in Matisse. Um, you pick your favorites, get your colors, um, try as many as you can. Um, for me, I started with a few colors when I introduced myself to this line and just fell in love with the entire range. So um, my acrylic paints round out number five as I look over there to see what number I'm on. Number six, stencils. I just love to use stencils in my work. It does not matter where you get them if you make them yourself. I love to, like office supply stores has alphabet stencils and I love that I can use this to add myself like big bold graphics in my work. Um, you can get stencils or use um, the stuff that they take um, sequins out of. So I think it's called like sequin waste. Um, those make great stencils. Um, of course, they're store-bought ones like Marabou makes some great ones. Um, how Whatever it is that you like to use as a stencil, leaves in your yard, um, different things like that, by all means, this just provides such a fun way to get something down on the page um, that I just find that, again, I cannot create without reaching for my stencils. So stencils rounds out my number six. Number seven of my favorite mixed media supplies has to go to my acrylic inks. Um, I have found that I use these and go to these for so many different things. If I just want to add splatters of color, if I want to use them with my writing, like a dip pen and nib or bamboo pen to do my journaling. Um, a lot of them have the dropper that I like to use to actually write with. Um, definitely splatters of color but I also like to put them in plastic bottles, spray bottles, and um, use them over my stencils just to create a fun pattern that way. Again, so many on the market. Liquitex, um, this one is called an Amsterdam. There are, I've already lost the other one. It's, it's, it's yeah. lost. Thank you. FW Inc. makes a great one you find, I just love the colors and I think that's why I end up using um, picks because 
every single range has such beautiful colors that I end up just picking out some of my favorite colors. But um, acrylic inks just make things so easy and everything just kind of works together so beautifully. So rounding out my number seven are my acrylic inks. So number eight is kind of a newbie on the scene. And I think that once I started to throw down washi tape again, just to add some bold graphic or just something else, I found that I really like it and I can't seem to get myself through a page or a canvas or an anything without finding a little something else to put in on the page. So my number eight is going to have to go to washi tape. It's nothing special. It's nothing huge or earth shattering, but um, I just find that it just helps me to finish things out and make things just look a little something. Um, so I always just end up using washi tape. It's, again, not earth shattering. It's not something that if you don't have it, you're not going to be able to create because certainly you can take um, masking tape and a paintbrush or some stencils and create your own washi tape. Um, but I just like the cool designs and I like that I can find this, like now washi tape's everywhere. So I like that I can find cool patterns lots of different places. So my number eight goes to my washi tape. Number nine, acrylic paint markers. I absolutely love using markers to do my writing, make marks, um, add color, make things marry into pages. Again, such a variety of paint markers on the market in your art supply store. Um, I like using Liquitex. I like using Amsterdam. Um, there's a new one. Is it Posca? Posca? Pos? Posca? And I like the little bullet head or the the nib on these. These are nice and fine. Um, but every single company that I've ever tried has different nibs. So if you wanted to like make a big bold title, they have the bigger nibs. Um, if you wanted something small to just kind of scribble around the edges of something or to like grunge things up. They have nibs for those, but like Amsterdam has some really beautiful colors. Posca, I think I'm saying that right. Sorry if I'm not. Um, Liquitex, they all have just found a special place. I keep them on my desk and just kind of grab and go and grunge things up without even thinking about them. So number nine has to go to is it number nine? You promise? Okay. Number nine has to go to my acrylic ink markers. Number 10, and I don't know how I skip this in the order. Number 10 has to go hands down my favorite supply, even though you will see me go in with my hands. Let's just bring everything out. Now, um, paint brushes, it should be like a, a no-brainer. However, my Polar Flow 700B, this thing, I don't, I don't even think I could honestly, I know I can't create without having this around. And you think like, well, it's a paintbrush. Let's get over it. I understand. However, um, I like the fact that this guy has, it's a clear handle. So whenever I leave them sitting in water, they don't like this one doesn't buckle or come undone or stuff starts chipping off of it. Um, but I also love that I can use this one if I had to get rid of every other brush. This one is great for gluing and gessoing and collaging and acrylic paint and watercolor. It just is like a trusty, I think I've run out of good words to call it because it's just like a good if I only had enough money to get one brush, this Polar Flow, I know they come in several different sizes. Like they have a little tiny bitty baby one. I don't know where we're looking. Are we looking here? Are we looking there? I just left. <laughs> uh, where, where are we? They come in littles. Um, they've got several different sizes. I have usually a couple of them, um, but I, 
I find as though I always use and I always create with um, the Polar Flow brush because it's just one good universal, very good for your money, no matter how much I mistreat it, it always comes back and performs and holds up beautifully. So number 10, rounding out my top 10 has to go to my Polar Flow 700B. Bonus, we cannot ever create in my studio and you if you've watched before if you're brand new every single time I start finish you name it my Jerry's Jumbo Jet black pencil is always somewhere in um, any of my journal pages in any of my canvas work this guy let's just have a second to talk about it because it is a bonus it it earned bonus status so um this is an oil impregnated <laughs> charcoal and um i absolutely love the very dark black mark that you get um so i can lay this down to kind of grunge things up i can of course go down have some wet paint down on my surface and kind of carve into it with this um blend it out beautifully i just find that this pencil is just magic. It can, again, grunge things up or as a final mark, just be like a really, really dark mark for me. So this always makes an appearance. So my bonus probably, nope, I couldn't say it just, it has to be a bonus, but then it has to have like its own space because I've used so many of these pencils, I can't even count and they go down to like the bittiest bits, but, um, to round out my most used, this stays on my desk with several of its sisters in various links, um, is my Jerry's Jumbo Jet Black Pencil. So, with that being said, I hope you guys are inspired to have a look on your desk. See what supplies there are that you can't honestly create without. I feel as though every single thing we've talked about here has been a repurchase, a repurchase. There's nothing here that made it into my top 10 plus a bonus um, that I've not purchased several before and I will continue to purchase until, I don't even know what comes after until infinity. That's what I'm sticking with. But anywho, thank you guys so much for joining today. Leave below your comments of your must have, your top 10. Um, maybe it's something that you think I should try out, something that's your favorite that I didn't mention here. I would love to get your suggestions of some new things to try so that maybe I can switch it up some. Um, but thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Bye. I think I did it wrong. Oh, bye. Bye-bye. Like, how do we start something fun and then we can't even keep it going? You know what? That could be what's wrong with my neck now that I think about it. I bet you I do that in my sleep. Like, whew. every time someone watches a video, you feel it. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Wonder if somebody's got a little voodoo doll. <laughs>